up? We're almost, Hello. almost here. Look at this. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are um, so welcome to join three guests with us today. Uh, we have Sai uh, Varanasi from Seagate. We have Magnus Jones from Ernst & Young on the phone, on the right. And we have Jörg Roskovac from AMD. So thank you. And of course, Clara, our executive director from the Falcon Foundation. All right, have, let's have a seat. Welcome, everyone. Jörg and um, Michael, can you, uh, Magnus, can you hear us? Yes, we can right. hear you. Perfect. So first of all, thanks everyone. Um, we are sitting here because we're announcing a, a new alliance. We have uh, been working on this for a couple of months, and this is an exciting new engagement partnership with our uh, partners Seagate, uh, Ernst & Young, and AMD, and hopefully many more to come. This is a col in collaboration with the Falcon Foundation and Protocol Labs. And really, as we talked about this morning, our main goal uh, for this alliance has been to help the Web2 customers move into Web3 and you know, help them with bridging that chasm. So uh, first and foremost, I'm going to ask a couple of questions as we are heading into um, a great panel session. Um, uh, Sai, I mean, we've been working with Seagate for quite some time now, and um, you know, you've always been very aligned with Web3. And I was wondering, like, what is Seagate's strategy, and how do you, uh, you know, look at Web3 in general at uh, at the at the uh, Seagate company? Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, team, for having us here. As representing Seagate, I'm really excited uh, to be here, part of this collaborative community, and the energy level is amazing. Just a few weeks ago, I was at the Phil Singapore, and amazing, amazing um, collaboration and innovation. That's what, that's the DNA at Seagate. We've been in the hard drive and mass storage space for 40 plus years. And we have seen a lot of you know, ups and downs and innovation from your client compute to private IT edge and now hyperscale and now we are seeing the transition into Web3. And we want to be there with you for the long haul. And that's really the basis of our whole strategy. And I want to define our strategy into three buckets. I call it phase one, phase two, phase three. And it really aligns with the Filecoin and Protocol Lab and the community roadmap. And the phase one is really what you're trying to do, which is building the network and scaling it cost effectively. About a year ago, we started a, a product um, that we tuned specifically for the Filecoin and decentralized storage community. Uh, we call it Core Vault. Um, and this hardware platform, what it does is it provides you the most reliable, easy to scale, uh, easy to deploy, um, and we have started doing a lot of collaboration work, thanks to some of you in the community. We have a reference architecture lab within Seagate. We try to optimize and uh, create the best offering for your stack, and we can work with you, we work with you, and we both learn together. Um, and so we are deploying that core vault platform, um, and we, you know, we are looking forward to more and more collaboration. So that's phase one. And uh, in the next you know, few quarters, we are thinking about phase two, which is this core wall platform that we have, you can actually use that to offload some of the compute that you deploy to manage storage. And so then that reduces your uh, cost of ownership and the easy to scale, et cetera. And that enables the phase two of the Falcon community roadmap related to um, uh, data retrieval and the early compute work that you are doing on the network. Um, and then the phase three, of course, in the long haul, we want to, uh, we are excited to actually work with the community uh, on uh, composable architecture. Um, that actually increases the scale and the speed and efficiency and all that comes with it. And you know, finally, I want to make a comment about the fact that you know, I have been in the storage industry a long time, spent a lot of time with Web2 customers and hyperscalers. Our commitment to this community is that we are going to bring those technologies that we deploy in mass scale 
to the decentralized storage community. And next year, we're actually launching a 30 terabyte hard drive that will be part of this core vault platform that we bring and work with you and deploy. So that's yeah. the thing in a nutshell. Awesome. I mean, it's great to hear, one, you're running your own systems. You've been testing the hardware. You've been working with our storage provider ecosystem very actively. And thank you so much for flying in from Singapore, specifically for this panel session, because, you know, uh, uh, Sai is the SVP, and I should have introduced him with the right title, uh, SVP of product, uh, product marketing and, and product management for, um, for Seagate. So very happy. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, moving on from storage to compute, York, welcome. York is the head of blockchain here at, at AMD, also very engaged since day one. York, um, tell us a little bit more about AMD's Web3 strategy and how Filecoin fits in that. Thank you very much, Stefan, um, for being here. Thank you very much. It, very exciting times. So we are in a paradigm shift, right, um, where technology is gaining the next level. Um, we have seen it um, during um, the COVID crisis. It was a huge accelerator um, moving us into this technology. And of course, new technologies, like um, with the internet um, in mid of the 90s, there are challenges. So challenges in terms of efficiency, um, in terms of scalability, in terms of latency, in terms of, of energy um, power consumption and carbon dioxide footprint is in everybody's mind and every solution needs to get optimized um, in a perfect environment. And um, this is something um, where we are proud um, working with the community and with partners um, to building a complete ecosystem. And as you know, um, AMD is a hardware manufacturer. So we are producing the silicon, the CPUs, the graphics, and now as you have seen with um, um, the acquisition of Pensando and Xilinx, we have FPGAs and um, EPUs in the portfolio, which we can use for that ecosystem because it's not only the compute power which needs to be optimized in, in scaling um, to better architecture like chiplet, um, seven nanometer, five nanometer, 2.5 nanometer. It's also um, the, the interconnect between those components and the network infrastructure. For example, with um, smart switches and with smart NICs, all will interfere um, the performance between um, the calculation and the data throughput um, between the different data centers. And this is something where we are working um, very close with um, protocol labs, um, with Seagate um, on, and um, Sai just mentioned it, um, with, with the uh, proof of concept lab, where we putting those different components together to see how they perform where and which screw we can tune um, different options to reduce the carbon dioxide footprint, to increase the transaction speed, to make the data center um, more profitable and more um, efficient in that ecosystem. And I'm also proud um, having now a blockchain area where um, a lot of companies um, participate together to grow the business and um, um, distributed or decentralized storage is one of the basic things um, in that area. It doesn't matter if you want to store an NFT or a music um, or a movie or if we go into the enterprise where the data are much more sensitive, like in the medical area, so where leaks or hacks um, will be a catastrophe for um, the system. So those emergent business economics where this technology is a base foundation where we need to work together that everybody can play within. So because decentralized is only working if everybody can participate, not only um, one um, particular company, it's an open source um, community approach. And um, yeah, we are very proud um, to work with all um, you guys here to improve and um, to develop the next standard based on Web3. 
Fantastic. And I have to applaud your team as well, just like Seagate. You've been involved since day one. You've been a proponent. Your team has been running the code. And so what a lot of people don't know is that we actually have bi-weekly calls for the last, you know, I don't know, 10 months or even further, where we've been optimizing between the technology partners already um, to improve the ceiling, the, you know, essentially all the processes in our stack. And I can only imagine what we can build next. So very excited to have you. Uh, you brought up a good point, enterprises. Uh, that's what we're all here for, because 80% of the data gets stored, or 80% of the data that's being created is essentially created by enterprise entities, and that's why I'm really excited to have Magnus on the call here uh, from Ernst & Young. Um, I saw, Magnus, that Ernst & Young also um, joined the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance recently, so would love to hear what uh, Ernst & Young's strategy is and how you see the evolution of Web3 and Falcon as part of that. Thanks, and, and thanks for having me. And, and first of all, Sora can join me in, in person. I have one of my daughters at the doctor's today, and the other one is hosting a Halloween party as speaking. So sorry for any background noise as well, and I am on my phone here, so, so just so we're clear that one. But uh, with regards to our strategy, EY was one of the first um, companies in general out there back in 2015 who has had a view towards blockchains that they have to be public in order to function. So we have steered away from the private circus for, for a long time and had all our eggs in one basket, so to say, saying, going all in on this one. So this one fits perfectly well in terms of what we see and what is important in that context towards enterprises is, of course, privacy, security, and regulatory compliance in general. Build a trust there as that is lacking definitely. So uh, we, we clearly see sort of um, the same pattern as we heard from Jörg and others out there that global data and storage markets are for sure accelerating right now, but you have to have the fit into the organization and have to sort of make the convincements towards the C-level group that might not be that updated as the ones of us who is in this one working with this one. So from the strategy point of view, EY is into this from A to Z from all kinds of angles, everything from the core tech side towards tax legal, regulatory compliance side. So we're in all kinds of areas within this one. So we're very excited to see how this alliance also can evolve further and, and bring more sort of power and push into the mindset that we truly believe in. Awesome, thank you so much. No, this is great. I think the fact that you're seeing it as complementary as well to all the other alliances that you're already participating in is sort of similar to how we look at it. Um, I think EVM has become sort of a standard these days, right? And as you know, with Falcon, we are also implementing our first virtual machine, and that will be EVM compatible. So my hope is that as you built out these practices that you can sort of bring in the Falcon stack um, as well, and, and of course, you know, the smart contract capabilities that we have. Um, Clara, uh, Falcon Foundation, how is the Falcon Foundation involved and how do you look at growing the ecosystem from a, an enterprise web two perspective? Yeah, so first off, for those that are unaware, we are just celebrating Filecoin's second birthday. We just Ooh. had an amazing birthday party last night. Some of you guys were at the party, but I do want you guys to hear these numbers. Right now we have over 16 exabytes of data on our network, less than two years. That is absolutely ridiculous for what most people believe we can do in a centralized cloud storage platform. And today we have over 4,000 storage providers across 44 countries building this distributed data network with us. So there's definitely strength in numbers, as Rachel had said. Uh, Savan and I, and also the entire Protocol Labs network, we've been working together for a long time as partners and since the beginning of Filecoin's network launch. In fact, some people have even thought Savan and I are married on business trips. <laughs> because we have such great partnerships. And we're so excited today to really bring other amazing partners with us, from Ernst & Young to AMD to Seagate right over here. Um, I also wanted to quickly just thank everyone on the team that really made this possible, Daniel and also Francesca and the entire Protocol Labs legal team and our legal team um, and your guys' legal team um, to really get this together in such a short time period. Um, we 
at the foundation. We po we're hosting this event, but we also very much um, really believe in the power of the Filecoin network. And for those that may not necessarily be as aware of the power of enterprise data, by 2025, we will have 200 zegabytes of data. I didn't even know zegabytes was a word. I don't think I learned that when I was growing up. Uh, but that is a lot of data. And actually, 80% of that data is driven by enterprise companies. And so we have the biggest players right now in the room that are here with us as part of this alliance that we hope to really bring the other big enterprises along the journey. And some of you guys might be wondering why, why this and why now? Well, there's actually three reasons why we're doing this with, with all of these amazing partners here. The number one reason is we're feeling demand. We had a survey with the International Data Corporation earlier this year that 90% of enterprise organizations want a decentralized storage solution, especially um, something that is cheaper and more robust. We're around 1 100th the cost of AWS when it comes to our Filecoin network, and uh, people are, are really looking for something that is available and out there. We're, we're hearing the demand, and we want something that exists that allows for that. Number two, is people want geographic distribution. So 85% uh, of all organizations really wanted something geographically distributed, and we have that with over 4,000 storage providers building this network with us, and also, like I said before, 44 countries. And the number third reason is how amazing it is to have redundant copies of enterprise data all around the world. Um, if you guys remember, close to a year ago, on October 4th, if you guys use a product called Facebook, Facebook had an incredible outage on its network where uh, people just could not even log in. And that's what happens when you have a centralized single point of failure. When something fails, everything fails with it. That single day, Mark Zuckerberg lost $6 billion in his net worth when the stock plummeted. Uh, in addition, $60 million in advertising value was lost. Right? And that's the, the, the power of something that isn't redundant, where there isn't multiple copies. And so for those three reasons, we are just so thrilled to be part of this incredible alliance and to build this with this incre incredible set of partners with us. Awesome, thank you. And um, you, know, you said a couple of things uh, that piqued my interest um, that I want to uh, ask some questions to Sai about. So first, the alliance itself is about creating awareness and education, but also innovation, right? Obviously, we're sitting here with technology partners uh, that are not only building technologies, but are bringing enterprises and even traditional um, analysts and press along the way. So one of the questions I get in a lot of cases of when it comes to storage costs or storage innovation, how do we ensure that our ecosystem gets access to the same technologies that the hyperscalers have access to? Because typically hyperscalers, they are a larger customer of yours, right? They are your yeah. top customers. They get early access, better pricing. How can we bring that innovation, that efficiency, cost efficiency and performance and so on back to our ecosystem? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> so like I mentioned earlier, um, like I'll give you an example. Next, next year we're bringing our 30 terabyte hard drive to the hyperscaler community. But we want to bring that also to the decentralized storage and the Filecoin community. The way we can work together, which we are really excited about, is collaborating together in our reference architecture labs, which we do, by the way, with the hyperscalers and even client edge customers of ours who are large in scale. But we, we can do that. We're already starting to do that. Like you mentioned, we run the um, um, storage provider stack in our, in our labs not to <laughs> mine coins, but really to learn, learn with you um, and collaborate with you on new solutions. And we want to work with you to um, deploy your unique applications as your applications are evolving in our labs so we can actually provide a solution for your application and continue to evolve on an ongoing basis. So what I'm thinking is we not only bring to you the solutions and innovations that we do on large scale with the big customers, but also layer on top of that the unique features and the ever-evolving uh, technologies that you are trying to deploy, and we can bring those two together. And we are building a process within our company to do that because we believe, um, like Claire said, we, you know, we believe the decentralized storage network is only going to grow 
and all of these end, end, end points, edge and hyperscale and decentralized, all of this will coexist and, and we'll be using storage and compute in a very efficient manner and provide actually um, the ownership of the data in, at the end user. So hopefully we'll get access to those larger capacity drives that's through this alliance. Yes. Uh, Rob, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Jorg, I have a question for you. Um, how did you get into Web3, by the way? And what is the most exciting part in Web3 for you personally? <laughs> that, that's a very good question. So um, I started something around seven years ago um, where um, we got um, um, the first um, business and um, the first um, systems up and running based on the Ethereum protocol. Hmm. And um, the technology from the early beginning was very exciting because um, we were also thinking about, so if you can use this um, for a kind of a currency-based thing, um, you can do much more. And um, this was the start, then also um, joining the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, um, working in the enterprise um, business, um, having um, the first um, business interactions with customers around um, supply chain management, then um, also in the medical area, um, how to secure um, DNA storage, for example, another good use case. Nice. And um, even more, and um, now it's really tailoring um, business cases which are ready um, for the market. And again, it's a development process. Um, yeah, similar as we have experienced it mid of the 90s with the internet. So we are still in the early days, um, but it's fascinating how fast the community, the partners, and the engagement is growing this time. It's a lot faster than um, um, last time with the internet. Cool, awesome. Um, Magnus, um, you know, you're sitting at the forefront of you know, the C-suite, right? At Ernst & Young, you come into the enterprise at a very high level. Uh, what is sort of your recommendation in how we can bring Falcon to the, to the enterprise customer base? Um, if you're, you know, looking at the ecosystem, how can the ecosystem help you, and how would we, in, you know, include or involve Ernst & Young in that process? You know, I think as, as mentioned, as you guys also know, the C-suite is, is a very mixed audience in terms of the maturity level of this one. And they have to feel secure around all the elements around to privacy, security, and also the compliance part of the whole thing. And I think that's, that's a great package that we can build around this one in the way that we also see in general, you know, that we, we believe that we live in a world that will not look like it is today in even just three years or even in five years. And the same more and more of our corporate clients see, and they are starting now to prepare for what's coming. They're preparing for what's coming within decentralized finance, not the protocols necessarily that is out there today, but the mechanisms of how it works. Take just one example from Norway where I'm located where the business entity register of Norway has created the shareholder register on the public Ethereum blockchain because they don't believe that the public registers of Norway or in the world will be built in the same centralized way that they're doing today. We have assisted them there on the work, also on the regulatory part on the GDPR work, which is also very difficult. So just if you take that one into the link towards how also Central Bank of Norway is developing a uh, e-corona e e case now, testing that one, using ERC level tokens that mixes these ones together, then sort of the enterprise level gets a much better understanding of the trust of the parties that is actually in there and what is possible. So within when saying DeFi is sort of the mechanisms, we also believe that we will see decentralized systems in terms of procurement, sales contracts, everything will be dealt with in a totally different way in terms of that you will fragmentize your data. You might even sell your data to competitors by micro fragments. But on the top of that, you will have decentralized operations in terms of how we deal with freights, warehouse handling, everything. So it's the whole package of that ecosystem that we see more and more entities are now preparing for to see what is coming out there. Not necessarily what is out there per se as is today, but what they will have to build in times of matter. And I think just as Jörg said, I went into this one at about the same time uh, in, in, in around 2015. And I think what lots of people are missing out there in the whole perspective of context there is actually 
looking at blockchain and the role that we are talking about here in the context of something that came in 2009-ish and adding towards, oh, 10, 11 years, oh, nothing has happened. While well, what we're actually talking about is from the mainstream smart contract areas that we are working on here came in 2015 for full, add sort of saying 10, 11 years to that, and we will see what governments in Norway like now are looking into and all over the world and C-level corporates like Microsoft, etc., that we are working with and saying next two to four years, that's the perspective of things that we see and that's where you have to prepare for now. So that's the excitement of the things that we see right now in, in, in terms of uh, more and more entities actually preparing for this one more than doing actually stuff right now, even though that is also possible. Awesome. All right, so lots of potential, obviously, um, and very excited to see Ernst & Young driving um, you know, this decentralized storage and decentralized technologies forward. Um, maybe going back to Clara for a second, um, what are you most excited about, about you know, as an outcome of this alliance? You see, you know, these are just three major vendors already that are starting as founding partners to, this, um, to start up this alliance, but hopefully we'll add many more Maybe you can comment on what you're most excited about and also where you would like to take this with these partners. Yeah, well, first off, um, for those that are not as familiar with enterprise data, it's a $82 billion market. And if you imagine, you know, if we were to look at the world 20 years ago, if you were to lose your work laptop, um, you may not care because there's backup copies today. We are still relying on the cloud and, and services there. And this is a huge opportunity for us to really make sure that businesses all around the world can have reliable service. So I'm really, really excited about the future of data, where data is going, where data is innovating, and where we can be. Um, Filecoin right now, I, arguably in my opinion, is the leading data provider for Web3. We are really taking on a lot of really complex Web2 challenges and uh, really excited for us to lead this way with this alliance and also taking partners with us. And so to give you a little bit of timeline, like I said, we like to move fast. We've built this network really fast. We've onboarded a ton of available storage very fast. But this alliance, we got interest from all of these players around the table in less than six weeks. And that is really, really fast for uh, enterprise companies like what we have around the table here. And so I just wanted to say there is so much demand, so much interest, and my uh, biggest assignment is to grow this alliance. I want to see the, the big boys at the table. I want to see everyone being able to understand decentralized data, and I also want to be able to build this with our incredible community of talented engineers, builders, investors, everyone here in this room that are here today to celebrate Phil Lisbon. Awesome, awesome. Um, I got to ask, we, we have limited time. I wish we had more time for more questions. Got a much longer list of questions, but if you would look into the future in five years, um, you know, Sai, you're sitting, you know, you're one of the, the largest storage manufacturing companies in the world, so you have a global view, you know, exactly how much you know, hard drives are being produced and how much data is being generated and the supply and demand, you have an extremely good view on that. Um, where do you think the market will move to and how does decentralized storage fits in that? In that yeah, picture? it's a good question. Let me see if I can do a quick one. <laughs> yeah, this is a quick one. I, I, I think, you know, five years from now, let's say, the amount of data that we are going to ship as an industry, you know, Seagate ships the most exabytes per year um, compared to anybody else. Um, we think that data exabyte growth is 20, 30 percent type number per year that we are shipping. But even that is not enough to, you know, today we only store what, less than maybe 1% or so of the yeah. data the world generates. And we need lot to store a lot more so we can deploy all these AI engines and all of that stuff. So we, I, think, I think a big factor is for us to innovate so we can ship more exabytes in a cost-effective manner. But then the thing that I'm excited about with the decentralized storage is that also it's a more efficient way to deploy the data as well. So one of the things we are also thinking about is that 
the decentralized storage ecosystem actually enables a lot more greener economy with respect to data. So uh, reusability of the storage devices and solutions, uh, deploying them more efficiently. Um, so I think that's one of the factors we didn't talk about today, but that I'm really excited about. It's a lower carbon footprint uh, solution as well. Um, and, then, and that should actually bring down the cost of deployment and uh, enable us to store more data and use it more effectively. Awesome, thank you. And last question to Jorg. Jorg, um, where do you think in five years we'll be? Will it be like one metaverse? Will we all live in the metaverse? Because I know you're a very big fan of the metaverse. <laughs> of course not. But, um, oh, come on, I thought you would say yes. <laughs> no, we need to be realistic. Um, so it's very exciting times. And yes, I'm sure that there will be a huge part um, where we accelerate our business in the metaverse with new tools, um, with new um, nice features we can enable for um, the communities, um, like with the Amazon in the early days to order something through the web. And um, this is a very exciting thing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited um, to work with all you guys and um, yeah, come and join. Well, I hope that uh, Marcus, um, Magnus, sorry, Magnus, uh, Sai, and York, and Clara, and all of us here at Protocol Labs can help make that a reality, meaning you know, we can move Web2 customers, build out all these new use cases, and hopefully uh, you know, store more than 1%, obviously, than uh, what is currently being stored. So I appreciate all of you joining our panel. I know we run out of time. I didn't ask all the other 20 questions I want to ask, but uh, this is just the beginning. Right? We just kicked it off today. I want to thank you all for standing behind Falcorn and the ecosystem. Thank you. And uh, thank you. And we'll hear more from all of you in the next, next quarters, next years, next decades. So thank you. We are here with you. Thank you.